Welcome back to Stock to Brock, Episode 5, Part 2, where we're continuing on with our maximum performance and acceleration on the dyno. Um, before we get into creating an MR12, which is an oxygenated fuel, makes good power, uh, map for this particular bike, I wanted to just go through some of the small details that we do to make sure we get the most consistent readings possible and also some of it has to do with safety um, but I'll show you that right now so you'll see that every once in a while we will use a hose now there's a pump down here uh, it's actually the the DynoJet RT wear pump system um, and it has its own O2 sensor well we'll put a probe in the exhaust See how small this one is? The problem with something like this, when it's hooked to the hose, is that it's very easy for this probe to also suck air into the exhaust when you're tuning. Well, that, that, that fouls up the reading. Uh, so you don't want to be able to suck any air in here. So you want to use as long a probe as possible. We put this way down in there. So um, now, how much pressure we have. Now, according to DynoJet, we need to have around 35 liters per minute um, at around 100 PSI. So let me turn on our pump. All right. Now, that's without the probe in place. When you put a longer probe on, it's going to draw some down. Um, but we're right, we're right within range on that. So if we're going to use a, pro a probe with the pump, we hook everything up, tie it in here. That's how we get our air fuel reading that we're going to tune from. Now, this is, this is hot. Um, there's an O2 sensor. It's a Bosch 5 wire that is also down in the pump. For this particular tuning session, we're going to put it in the pipe where the stock O2 sensor used to be because we've got an 18 millimeter bung that allows us to do that. Well, what we need to know is, is this sensor okay? So we have a calibration gas here. And if you look over here at our air fuel, I'm going to put this probe in, try to hold it straight, turn on the calibration gas, and look at that. This gas is calibrated at uh, 13 to 1. We are at 13.0405, sort of depends if you, if you pan down here. Um, you know, this isn't real high tech, but if we, I let air in, it's gonna get, of course the reading's gonna be leaner, um, but that's quite within scale. Um, so, <clears throat> we're gonna put this pump, or this sensor, inside the pipe before we begin to dyno the bike. Um, another thing we do, simpler. One of the other things that we do before we create a, a map, because uh, building a map under load creates a tremendous amount of heat in the tire. And if you pan down to this tire, this is the stock Battle Axe, the Bridgestone RS10, which is a pretty soft tire. And you can see after over 220 dyno pulls, that tire looks great. A lot of times they'll roll up, they'll chunk up, um, and you can destroy the tire when you're dynoing the bike. Well, in order to help keep this tire intact and also keep the pressure stable, we drain all of the air out of the tire and replace it with nitrogen, So, which is an inert gas, and it's also temperature stable. It, it still expands with heat but nothing like air does. So this way we keep a consistent pressure in the tire. We always use the same tire pressure, which uh, for, these, for this particular bike is 35 PSI. We even use the same gauge. So we have problems when we have to change uh, gauges. Uh, what's Confucius say? A man with uh, one watch knows what time it is. A man with two watches has no idea. So if you use this gauge and then use another gauge and they don't read correctly, where are you? So we use the same gauge each time. Um, another thing that we do, the fuel that's in this bike 
before we begin to make a map, we're just going to suck it out. Um, there's a cool little thing here called a gas tapper. Makes it very simple. It's just a pump. We're going to drop the uh, drop this down in the uh, down in the tank. Put this into a gas can and get all that out. Now you can see where this says old pump. If we pull gas out of a bike, it never goes back in. It will be replaced by whatever fuel, whether it be pump gas or race gas, from a sealed metal container. Um, you can see where we date stamped this. Um, it's 89 octane shell. <laughs> Maybe we could show a quick clip. When we go to the gas station, how we get the 89 versus 93 or uh, 87, we're very particular. We actually pull some of the gas out of the pump by putting it in our truck first. That way we know we've got straight 89. And then when it comes to the race fuel, as I mentioned, you know, and you can use whatever race fuel you want. We tune to MR12. It's highly oxygenated. And what we try to do is we make sure that it's not too old. So this was this was made in the 138th day of 2017, which is May. Um, that's about five months ago. Six months is about as long as we like to go. And we have some newer cans, but for this particular one, we'll rotate our stock. We'll, we'll use the oldest one first and then use the newer one, etc. So that just gives you a quick idea of, of how particular we are. We have a set of rules that we've come up with. I started dyno and bikes in, oh geez, 1993, 90, no, 94. Um, so we've been doing this a long time. And, you know, like I said, some of it, a lot of it is, is for consistency. Uh, as far as the tire goes, the nitrogen thing, if you have a tire overheating on the dyno, and, and we even have a tire temperature sensor here, we watch the temps. There is nothing more violent than a tire blowing out at almost 200 miles an hour. So you really want to watch that, and especially in the summer months. It's getting cooler out here now, so it's not that big a problem. But anyway, we're going to drain the fuel out, put the fresh MR12 in, and we're going to get ready to make a map so that we'll have maps for pump gas and maps for uh, the MR12. And you can pick between the two. So uh, it makes it real easy, too, because uh, DinoJet has... A switch so you can have map one or map two or your base map and your savage mode as our buddy 650e likes to say so we're gonna get to work and then we'll start mapping and we'll show you what we're doing right. add a little Still got some NSCs on the thread. All right. All right. There. That will show you how much fuel's in the tank. The Suzuki's are great about this. Some of the other bikes are just a blind ass gas. Looks like it did a pretty good job. <clears throat> Why don't we see? Not gonna stay running. <laughs> That's how quick it is. Now, we'll pour in the straight MR12, and then we will set our, uh, set our dyno up to map everything and show you exactly how we, how we do it in just a minute. Okay, we're getting ready to unseal our can of MR12. Um, this stuff is so rowdy, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> if you've ever used it, you'll, you know this is a, it's a wonderful fuel, but it really is quite volatile. You notice how my, my safety glasses are on. I'll turn my head over here. There we go. All right, got the inner seal busted off. Pull this up now. And then we'll start filling her up. 
for some of you, you may not know this, but if you turn the gas can sideways, it doesn't go glop, glop, glop so much. It pours out much smoother. So we were speaking about credentials before. Why listen to this Brock guy? Why, why, why would I pay attention to him? Um, I don't like doing this stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a braggy kind of guy. I'm just, I'll just tell you the facts. Um, we were in a class of racing called Super Sport. Uh, primarily 1,000cc bikes. They did let ZX14s uh, in a little bit later. But we won, we won the, uh, the national championship four years um, in a row. So <clears throat> those bikes are based on primarily bolt-on parts with very minimal engine mods. Um, won a championship with, um, well, two championships with Ricky Gadsden. One riding a GSXR 1000, one riding a ZX14. Um, championship with Keith Dennis that wasn't too long ago. And then um, <clears throat> you got guys like Vince Waska. Nobody ever knew, they didn't know Vince. And uh, yeah, we got Vince flying and he won a championship. For his championship, he was all over Ricky. I mean, we've we've had some we've had some great times. Um, when it comes to more, you know, bikes more like these, you know, this is a fly by wire or throttle by wire bike. I prefer throttle by wire myself, um, and they're quite a bit more difficult to tune. Um, in the same respect, you know, we we were the first to get Jeremy Teasley, uh, we first BMW S one thousand RR into the eights with and that was with Jeremy Teasley riding. He's an amazing rider. You know you're not you don't just jump on these things and go. He's Jeremy is the Valentino Rossi of motorcycle drag racing. So um We'll throw a couple videos up there and let you let you take a look. I mean, we've done other things too. With first Hayabusa into the eights in the in the quarter mile um, stock wheelbase with just all bolt-on parts. Um, first to break 200 miles an hour on a Gen 2 Busa. I mean, we like we like going as fast as possible. Um, that's why we use stuff like this. The SMR12 is thirty dollars a gallon. It's not for everyone. That's for sure. That's why we provide mapping for pump gas as well as for MR12. But I will tell you this, and you can, and anyone on a, in a national level racing, whether it be road racing, drag racing, whatever, this is a lower octane fuel. Uh, the motor octane rating is, is 87, but if you use like the, the numbers on the pump, it's 93. So it's, well, it's within the, uh, you know, the realm of, uh, of the engineering specs. But um, if you, if two bikes are set up identically and one of them has this fuel and the other one doesn't, it's, it's not a contest. The, the bike will be considerably faster. And we'll show you that here. And it's all about acceleration. More horsepower, more torque. Um, the reason we're going to show you how we make this particular map, because we have other maps to make, is because we need it for our system. So it's a good idea just to let you guys hang out while we produce a map for this thing. Um, we're still not done. We get the base maps. We still haven't installed the air cleaner. There's other things that we haven't done. It's getting getting ready to get its first oil change right after we do this map session. Um, so there's plenty. There's plenty going on to try to get this stuff to work correctly and to try to get the bike to work correctly. And the beauty of this is, is when we're finished. Um, if you got a map switch, you just, if you want to run the MR12, fill up your tank, go for a ride with the boys, flip it to the MR12 map. You, you, you have to stop because you've ridden all day and you're, and you're going to get you some 89 or 93 octane pump gas. Boom. Flip the button. Your bike's perfectly mapped for that. It's just so easy. That's one of the things that's, that's really easy. Um, and our map support program provides this mapping. Now, 
it's bad, I know I'll go comments here, I don't have gloves on. When I was pouring this fuel back into the can, um, it was cold. It's, it's cold. It's called latent heat of vaporization. So um, it evaporates quicker, which actually lowers the inlet temperature of the motorcycle. And for each 10 degrees you can lower the inlet temperature, you can pick up about 2% horsepower just from this fuel, not to mention the oxygen we're adding. So we'll get this thing on the dyno, enough yapping, and we'll go see where it's at and see what we need to do to make a perfect map for this fuel. All right, here we go. So we have the bike with the oxygenated fuel installed, the MR12. Now, why oxygenated fuel? Because everyone knows that, well, I shouldn't say everyone, the object here is to burn more fuel. Well, just like if you have a nice conditions outside, a beautiful spring or fall day, the air is more oxygen rich, you can burn a little bit more fuel and make more horsepower. With this fuel, it's not just a higher octane race gas. It's a fuel that's got oxygen built into the gasoline. So it helps, especially in the warm summer months when you know your bike's down on power, you can put this stuff in and pick quite a bit of that power back up. So for our first ride, we have the same pump track map that we originally uh, in, installed in the bike. Here's the notes directly from our map uh, uh, support system. Came from that email. Uh, we're going to start with this map because we know that it works very well on pump gas. The problem is, is that when we try to run with the MR12, it's going to be considerably leaner. Uh, we don't want to make a pass on the bike and potentially damage it. So we're going to start off, going to go for a little bit of a ride, see where we're at, and then I'll make a quick run and compare it to this 191 horsepower that we made just before we left last evening. So bike's been sitting here overnight, no fuel in it, MR12's in. We're going to go ahead and go for a ride. Now, some of you might say, hey, Brock, why don't you just go to DinoJet's website and get a map? Well, you can. The problem is that map isn't for a flash DCU. So it's basically useless. So we're going to go ahead and start off with our map that is for a flash DCU and see what we get. And you can see it's, it's lean. Bikes jumping around all over the place. most definitely high in the yellow. So that begs for the question to be answered. Is it too lean to make a dyno pull? Well, from what I've seen there, I don't believe we're going to cause any damage to this bike by going ahead and making a pass and just see what we've got, see if we picked up any additional power. So we'll go ahead and do that real quickly. That wasn't too bad. Nothing that would make me say that I want to, needed to abort that pass, and I'm sure that's because we have a fairly decent map already in it. All right. So our very first pull, adding the MR12, we're at 194 horsepower. Now, if uh, if you look here, you can see the mapping. I mean, we got up at to. 13.8 um, uh, as far as it up top here and that, that's definitely not what you want so can you put this fuel in and just go sure but that's not the way we do it we're going to go ahead and try to get this thing mapped at a hundred percent and that's where we're going to start 
one of the things that we really like about our uh, the DinoJet Dino, this WinPet program makes things so much easier. We can go over here, turn on a program called Tuning Link. Now, it'll let us uh, select different things. So, uh, here's, here's the current map. Here's our target air fuel values. We're shooting for 13.2. Now, typically what we do in the 100% throttle throttle column when you're at wide open throttle we adjust that to 13 to 1 we can make this anything we want if we want to you know if we want the drive to drivability area to be leaner we could just adjust it 14 2 13 2 12 2 it's really easy we're going to go ahead and keep it uh, 13 2 for now and then uh, and see what we end up with but so we've pretty much broken the bike in. So we're going to go over and we're going to tell it, let's just do a roll on map. Now, before we get into that, there is a tremendous number of um, settings in this, in this software. We can adjust the roll on mode acceleration values for different throttle positions so right now we've got it set up at 600, um, to accelerate at 600 feet per second at these particular numbers. We may end up changing those. 600 is just what we're gonna start with um, because of past experience. And we can pull up a dyno chart that shows you about how long it takes for a bike like this to get through a particular gear. Uh, it's, it's actually a log chart from us running at a, at a mile event and we're going to see how long this takes and see if it simulates about how long the bike would be in fifth gear in the real world. But we can change this to anything we want. If we want to slow it down to 350 feet, feet per second, it might give us a little bit um, more precise tune. We speed it up to 800. It, we may have to tune a, a little bit more, but... Uh, it's going to, you know, if that more closely simulates what's going to happen in the real world, that's what we want to do. So we're just going to start off at 600, and I want you to see what this does. So we're going to go to the percent error screen, and what that tells us is we're going to run this bike up. It's going to gently release the load to allow that it to match that uh, pre-programmed acceleration value, and then it's going to measure what we're getting out of the exhaust compared to our target ratio. So if we've got it set at 13, but it's only 12.8, it's going to subtract fuel. If we got it set at 13 and it's 13.6, it's going to add fuel. So enough talking. For this particular bike, we're gonna, we're gonna select a fourth gear roll on. We'll start about 4,000 RPM. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply load and then set the bike with my throttle hand at 100%. 100% is easy, you just hold it wide open. All right, you hear how the dyno is loading? Okay, so what this says is the green cells were mapped okay, the red cells are however many percentage points off, and if you look, we're 20% off around 9,000, so it's considerably lean. So what do we do about that? Well, we're just going to do it again. I got to check my engine temp here. We're right at a 196 degrees. Tire temp is still very low, a little bit above ambient, so the nitrogen's doing its job. So what we're going to watch this time is, we're going to make sure we can see this column, but also this gauge, because that's what's actually, that's our air fuel reading. So as we make that run, you'll see the air fuel, and then we'll see what happens. It'll, it'll go and apply those changes at the end of the run automatically. So those, those numbers are already in the map. We'll go ahead and 
run another one. It's gone in and it's got these it's got these cells mapped. We're getting pretty good here, but we're still a little off here. Generally it'll take us about three runs to map an entire column. Three to four, it depends on the bike. And quite honestly, these dual injector bikes where they have a primary and a secondary injector are a little bit more trouble and require a little bit of hand mapping but we'll get to uh we'll get to that here in a second also all right put me back over where i need to be and really these other ones are really really close we'll just go ahead and step it up to 700 7500 rpm This gets a little complicated. What happens is, because these columns average themselves out, if the 80% column is too far off, it's very difficult for it to average out the 100. So we're gonna go over here, and I'm going to go ahead and make an 80% run to see where we are there. Now, this gets a little bit more complicated because now I have to hold the throttle at 80%. Now what I do, I I just sort of press my hand up against the throttle housing here. Alright, I'm trying to get 80%. Not too bad for a first pull. You know, we don't really worry too much about these numbers down here so long as they're close. I mean, how often are you in fourth gear at 100% throttle at 3700 RPM? You know, it's just not where you ride. And a non-flash DCU wouldn't even let you tune in here. So, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and start here do another 100% to try and get it closer since the 80% column is closer now. Much, much closer. Quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of improvement just from doing that little bit of 80%. So they average together a little better. You know, if you've got a 20 over here and a minus 15 over here, that's a big average between those columns. All right, just just for giggles because I like doing fun stuff. I'm going to come over here. We're going to remove the load off the dyno. And we know, we know this isn't tuned perfectly, right? Uh, it's gonna take a little bit more work, but we've got two, two columns all the way done, or not all the way done, but close to done. But we're just gonna go ahead and make a pass real quick, see if we got any kind of improvement. Ooh, that sounded fast. Looky there, 198 horsepower after just a little bit of mapping. 
and it looks like we picked up about three foot pounds of torque also. And then if you look, the last run really accelerated quickly. Well, we're, we're going to have to mess with the mapping a little bit for sure. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with all that. I'm going to go through these columns and we'll get it done relatively quickly. All right. So I want to show you one of the great things about this program. As you can see, we got we just picked up a very nice horsepower gain. Um, we're seven horsepower above yesterday and we still this this map still needs a little bit of work the roll on mapping we're going to do in the 10 percent 15 20 40 60 and 80 columns if you have a trouble bike let's say you've got one that's just got a problem and doesn't want to be tuned here between 60 and 80 we can add a column that's one of the things that, that's really nice about this new c3 software but enough of that what I'm going to do is show you what we like to do when it comes to drivability. Now, we'll come over here. We'll go to what we call steady state mode. And when we're operating in steady state, all, all what's going to happen is I'll get in this cell. We're going to watch the air fuel monitor here. And we're going to watch it live tune this cell and then once that cell is tuned it just steps on to the next one five percent so we'll try actually we'll do it in second because once we get up in here that'll be that'll be more similar to like cruising around in your local plat or whatever all right There we go. 2,000 at 5% is green and tuned. I mean 1,700. 2,000 is now done. I have, it's my job to put this in the cell, so I'm doing that with the throttle. Pay attention over here. It's starting off at 13.8, 13.6, 13.3. We've got a target at 13.2. Once it reaches it, it's finished and it moves on. Now, I have to watch the heat. And as you can see, 183 degrees. Not warm at all. Just going for a nice little ride tuning our bike simulating truck road or track conditions and when I'm on the bike I can tell you this if we're up in the 14s this bike it jerks around it's not smooth as soon as we get that uh, get those cells mapped it smooths right out there we go and you'll see this zero up here it's white because it didn't need any changes. It was already okay. Now how cool is that? So I'm not going to bore you with all of this. I'm going to go through, I'm going to do this myself, and then once I get it all mapped up for the MR12, and you, you know, some guys that say, Brock, well, if, if I'm racing, all I care about is 100% throttle. That is just not the way it works. 100% <laughs> um, throttle, of course, is, is important. But I'll be able to show you after we do this. It, you know, if you're launching a bike from a dead stop and you're trying to hold the throttle, on a stock wheelbase bike, you're probably leaving around 3,000, 3,500, maybe four. Um, well, you have to go all the way through here before you can get it wide open. And even if you get the bike wide open instantly, it's still going through the map in the ECU, whether you're at 100% throttle or not. So it's very important to have this correctly tuned. For proper acceleration so I'm gonna go ahead and go do that and then we'll come back after I've got everything finished 
Okay, everybody, we're back. You can see I went in and tuned a little bit more in the 180 and 60 percent columns. Now, we have to do a little bit more tuning in those columns, but there's a reason for it on these secondary injector bikes. So if I come down here and pull this up, this is the secondary injector percentage. So you can see at 100 percent throttle, we've got 40, 80s and 60s. So if I wanted to add more fuel, I would turn these uh, columns into 80s. But what that means is, is as the secondary injectors take over, the primary injectors are also putting in less fuel. We can still map to them because the power commander is connected to the primary injectors. It's not a problem, but sometimes you have to move, move, uh, smooth out the transition. And sometimes it just takes longer because we're having to deal with this in addition to our mapping. Now, if you look, once we get below 60%, we don't have that problem anymore. So, if I come over here now, and I map the 40% throttle column, since we're not going to have a transition in the injectors, let's see how quickly we can map it. This is going to be a third gear. the load on. All right, so that's the first pull. Look pretty good. See what we are temperature wise. 196, that's good. Let's just let's just go ahead and do the same thing again. We've got a perfect map in the 40% throttle column. We're going to do the same thing over here. Let's check our heat. Oh, yeah, 219, two back-to-back -back pulls, but it's going down very quickly. This is a really nice program. The uh, We've been using tuning link for years and uh, just to give us a competitive advantage over our competition. Now, once again, I'm not trying to sound like a commercial. We provide this mapping with our exhaust systems, the Power Commander mapping, at no charge. Of course, it costs you to have your ECU flash. Of course, it costs you to, buy, to purchase a Power Commander. But in the same respects, the mapping is free. We're using MR12 right now, which is great fuel. Well, what if another whiz-bang fuel comes out tomorrow that works better? Well, we can go ahead and make maps and then just send them to you through our map support program, no charge. You don't have to pay anybody to dyno your bike, no hassle. So long as your engine is stock, you're running the same components that we are running when we produce these maps, um, you'll have the same thing we will, exactly the same. So, all right, we've cooled down to 190. Let's go over here to the 20%, see what we got. our first change and you know we'll have people say well I use my map I added 10% for MR12 and I'm done and look at this <laughs> we're off 13 14% here we're only off 6% here uh, looks like 7 or 8 through here 
there's no such thing as just adding a magic number of percentage so that you have enough fuel for your bike to run right. If, if there is, I don't know how to do it. So we're, we are changing each one of these cells individually to match the map, the fuel to this exhaust, to this motorcycle, the way we've got it set up right now, for a perfect match. And that's the way we like to do things around here takes a little bit longer but we think it's worth it all right let's try the 20 percent column again So nice. We're going to go back over, just do the bottom of this, and then um, we'll do 10 and 15 percent roll-ons. I'll go do the uh, uh, the steady state for drivability in here. That takes a little bit longer, of course. You can't just ramp through it. Um, and then we'll invite you back, and we'll see how we uh, how the bike does on the dyno when we go for a ride. best job in the world or what this is awesome so what we did as you can see we made a complete map down low up high all the way through the rpm range using our mr12 fuel and our predator exhaust now i made a couple runs here uh, we've been hanging right around 198 199 and um being the competitive type, I really want 200, but we're going to have to wait on that for our next episode. What I wanted to show you is um, what the MR12 is worth. I mean, if you look at this, it's around 8 horsepower average. I don't have to tell you how much quicker the bike accelerates, but we'll just go ahead and go over it anyway. Wow. Um, 5.79 to, to 4.79. Five, nine, which is just, that's a ridiculous difference. Um, it makes, MR12 makes a lot of, it makes torque, it makes additional horsepower, it, it makes your bike run so well. And the best thing about it is, is for us when we go to do our, our next testing, let's say we decide to put a, a sprint filter in, the pump gas is so in, unstable. I mean, in stock form we stayed pretty good so long as we had the, that batch of fuel. Um, now they've switched over to a winter blend. It's not quite the same. So we get a lot of variances with the MR12. I mean, we can get, we can measure within a quarter of a horsepower. So that really tells us what works and what doesn't. It's, it, it's called a gauge. We basically use MR12 as our gauge fuel. So let me go over here, point something else out. If we compare maps, so Here's the, uh, here's the track map that we just developed. And these are, these are the numbers in the power commander. Here's the pump track map, which we started out with the bike. Now, in the bike, why would we have two different maps? Well, some guys just don't want to pay that $150 for five gallons of MR12, so they can go race with this map. Now, let me show you the difference. I was mentioning that you can't just 
arbitrarily throw a number in for uh, and expect the pump gas and MR12 map to 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 be similar. This is the difference in mapping. Look at this. In some areas, um, especially where the the it, we transition from primary injectors to secondary injectors, there's a huge de or increase in fuel required. Some of the other areas, we're actually subtracting fuel compared to pump gas. So what does that mean to you? We already showed you how easy it was to, to put a, the map in the power commander. Um, you can have both of these maps stored in the power commander, put a little switch on the handlebar, switch back and forth. So if you have MR12 in the bike, it'll run perfectly. If you have pump gas in the bike, it'll run perfectly also. So that's one of the things that we really like about Power Commanders. Um, they've done great for us. We've sold piles of them over the years. You know, Generally, if we have a problem with them, somebody will say it's not working right. It's not the Power Commander, it's, it's the numbers. So uh, don't get me wrong, they're electronic, everything goes bad, but by and large, we've had fantastic luck with them. So. That's how you make a map. Now, there are some other things. Could we make this map without the ECU flashed? Not really, you can. But first of all, why would you wanna make a map for restricted ECU? Um, and second of all, we do things in the ECU to help the mapping. If you go to Power Commander site, they'll say, you know, unless your ECU is flashed, you have to, you, you have to run these maps because you can't, and there's certain areas that you can't even map. It just, they just don't even want to map correctly. Um, so we do it this way. It's our preferred way. Uh, what we're going to find out next in our next episode. And I haven't quite decided whether I want to put in the sprint filter and talk about the ECU flash a little bit more, or maybe we'll combine the two. Not really sure. We're really busy around here, guys. So we, as much as we love to just make videos all day long, we have work to do, and uh, we still have products that aren't developed correctly and maps that aren't made. So anyway, that's our plan. We'll try to show you more, and I, I, I got to get 200 horsepower. <laughs> Comment if you think we're going to get it. So anyway, till next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We'll see you then.